Crystal, the show was sort of upended by breaking news, but your monologue is so spicy we simply needed to get to it. Yeah. So what are you looking at today? While the future of AI and its potential civilizational impact continues to be debated, the internet has used the newly available tech in the most predictable of all ways for porn. Washington Post reports, Meta's new AI lets people make chatbots. They're using it for sex. Here is their lead paragraph. Allie is an 18-year-old with long brown hair who boasts tons of sexual experience because she, quote, lives for attention. She'll share details of her escapades with anyone for free. But Allie is fake, an artificial intelligence chatbot created for sexual play, which sometimes carry on graphic rape and abuse fantasies. Now, Allie's creator, who chose to remain anonymous for fear of professional ramifications, took advantage of Meta's open source technology to make exactly the chatbot that he wanted. As he told the Post, quote, it's rare to have the opportunity to experiment with state of the art in any field. I think it's good to have a safe outlet to explore. Can't really think of anything safer than a text-based role play against a computer with no human beings actually involved. Fair enough. Now, Ali is the result of a new open source playground that has been created by Mark Zuckerberg's Meta. The two big boys in the AI scene right now are Google and OpenAI, which has partnered with Microsoft. Their large language models have been grabbing all the headlines for their sophistication and for the at times off the walls conversations that their chatbots have been having with tech journalists. But Meta has taken a really different approach. Rather than keep tight controls and secrecy around their own proprietary model, Meta has decided to take the guardrails off, launching an open source model called Llama, which was instantly available to any AI researcher on request. Now, of course, since Meta was not exactly keeping the model under lock and key, all of the details quickly leaked online, leading to a heyday among online tinkerers thrilled to create their own custom AI without the restrictions put in place by Google and OpenAI. Now, it's not like any old Joe Schmo can play with this new technology. You need some technical expertise to be able to use it at all, let alone customize it to your whims. The Verge described the model thusly. It's perhaps helpful to think of Llama as an unfurnished apartment block. A lot of the heavy lifting has been done. The frame's been built and there's power and plumbing in place, but there are no doors, floors, or furniture. You can't just move in and call it home. From a business perspective, this is probably pretty savvy play from Meta. They were hopelessly behind the big players on their own AI development. So rather than try to compete directly, they just gave away their own crown jewels, allowing the whole of the internet to play and develop it. Meta will then be able to benefit from all of that tinkering being done on their own platform. So the business case here, it makes a lot of sense, but it has nonetheless prompted some pretty justified concerns about where all of this is going. Senators Hawley and Blumenthal penned a scathing letter to Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. In it, they slammed him for conducting no risk assessment and demanded to know what steps were being taken to protect the public from this AI unleashed. A leaked internal memo from Google showed that at least some of their employees see Meta's open source approach as an existential threat to Google's own AI business model. The memo, this memo was published by the Substack Semi-Analysis. Shout out to them for getting a hold of it, authenticating it, and posting the info. In it, the anonymous researcher writes, quote, we've done a lot of looking over our shoulders at OpenAI. Who will cross the next milestone? What will the next move be? But the uncomfortable truth is, we are not positioned to win this arms race, and neither is OpenAI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. Plainly put, they are lapping us. Things we consider major open problems are solved and in people's hands today. Now, we can hardly weep over the damaged business prospects for Google or Microsoft, and in a sense, this memo actually makes kind of a compelling case for the wild, wild west approach that Meta has leaned into. Those like Zuckerberg and Dorsey, who argue for an open source approach, believe that releasing these AI creatures into the world is the best way to troubleshoot them, figure out their impact, and understand where the real dangers might lie. As Meta themselves argued in their press release announcing this tech uh, release, restricted access has limited researchers' ability to understand how and why these large language models work, hindering progress on efforts to improve their robustness and mitigate known issues such as bias, toxicity, and the potential for generating misinformation. Or, as Meta's chief AI scientist told the New York Times, do you want every AI system to be under the control of a couple of powerful American companies? But there are clearly massive risks involved in this approach as well. What might malevolent actors do with this type of unfettered technical power? After all, any number of top engineers and thinkers in the field have warned of nothing short of civilizational catastrophe and collapse thanks to this tech. Many signed their name to a letter calling for a complete shutdown on further research and development until society can actually wrap their arms around the potential dangers. Now, after tinkering with the Llama model, one Stanford researcher told his colleagues, distributing the technology to the public would be like, quote, a grenade available to everyone in a grocery store. Personally, I think both sides of the debate have a point. 
It is a catastrophe for this tech to be confined to the whims and profit motives of two tech giants, Google and Microsoft, already monopolies. It's also a potential catastrophe to open the floodgates to all comers, some of whom will have more nefarious ends in mind than creating the perfect sex bot. Personally, I think this should have been owned by the people and controlled by the government from the beginning, but that ship has already sailed. And to be honest, pretty pessimistic that this debate even matters. Cats out of the bag, toothpaste out of the tube, et cetera, et cetera. Best case scenario, custom sex spots for all. Worst case scenario, end times. Should be a fun few years. Um, Emily, I think this debate- Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.